Lord be with you, and welcome to worship. You may find it easier to participate in today's service by going to the home page of our website and downloading and printing today's bulletin. Also in that bulletin, you'll find announcements about upcoming events. In addition to this recorded service, we are also having in-person services on the front lawn of the church on Saturday evenings at 5.30. Space is limited, but you can make a reservation through our weekly word. Virtual Trivia Night will be coming on Wednesday, September 23rd at 7 o'clock. For more details, see the most recent Westminster Weekly Word. Today we express our sympathy to Faye Barnaby on the recent death of her husband, Ken. I ask that you hold Faye in your prayers. Our flowers today are given to the glory of God and in memory of Art Butters by his wife, Anna. Our collection for Emmanuel Dining Room continues on Sunday mornings. Between 9 and 10 o'clock, we're located in the church parking lot, and you may bring your donations of sandwiches, bottles of water, fruit, or cookies. The people at Emanuel Dining Room are deeply grateful for the way we have sustained them during this pandemic. Several people make today's worship service possible. Playing the organ will be our director of music and organist, Tony Thurman. Our chorister, Hayoon Choi, will be singing. And our videographers are Chip Flieger, Roger Reinecker, Baden Satoff, and Sophia Wolf. And now we begin our worship, joining together in our call to worship. We have come to worship the living God who creates heaven and earth. Let us celebrate the gift of life and give thanks for the wonders of God's world. ourselves and the truth is not in us. But when we confess our sin, God, who is faithful, forgives us and transforms our hearts. Trusting that God receives us with grace, let us confess our sin and the sin of this world. Praying together. Merciful God, we are quick to ask for grace when we have fallen short and for patience when we have stubbornly turned away from you. Why are we slow to show the same mercy to others? We keep track of wrongs and cling to old hurts rather than offering the forgiveness that could free others and ourselves. Transform us, we pray. Pour out your mercy upon us 
until it flows forth from us through acts of love. Amen. Siblings in Christ, hear the good news. Friends, our God is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Know that you are forgiven and be at peace. And let all God's people say, Amen. Hi friends. There's a children's song that asks how you show others you are happy. Maybe you know it. If you do, sing along. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. What are some of the things that make you happy? Maybe hugging your stuffed animals or playing with your toys, or spending time with the people you love. Do you feel happy all the time? No. We all have other feelings too, like sad, or angry, or frustrated. Can you make a sad face? How about an angry face? What makes you feel better when you're sad or angry? One of the things I've learned as I've gotten older is that there is a feeling that is bigger and longer lasting than happy. It's called joy. No matter what else I'm feeling, I can feel mad or sad or happy. There are some things that always bring me joy holding my children, or hearing them laugh. Those things bring me great joy. Seeing the way that our church family cares for each other and for others in our world, especially when times are hard, that brings me joy too. Other feelings come and go, but deep down in our hearts, Joy is there. It's like the feeling you get when someone you love gives you a big, warm hug. You know, even when you feel sad or mad, that it's going to be okay. Joy keeps us going even when we don't get to enjoy some of the things and the people and the activities that make us happy. There's a verse from one of the songs we sing in church that talks about joy. It goes like this. I've got joy like a fountain. I've got joy like a fountain. I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. Joy is like a fountain that just keeps bubbling up and flowing. And do you know why? Because God's Love is the source of our joy, and God's love never changes. It's the love that the Bible talks about and the love that will always keep us close in Jesus Christ. We can be full of joy because no matter what else we are feeling, God's love holds us close just like a hug. Friends, let's pray, and I hope you and those who are watching with you will join me in our echo prayer. Dear God, thank you for your love that gives us joy like a fountain in our souls. Amen. Thanks for joining me. See you next week. Today we have two brief scripture lessons, the first from the book of Psalms and the other from the Gospel of John. 
from the 98th Psalm, make a joyful noise to the Lord all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of melody, with trumpets and the sound of the horn, make a joyful noise before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who live in it. Let the floods clap their hands, let the hills sing together for joy at the presence of the Lord, for he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the earth with righteousness and the peoples with equity. And our second reading from the 15th chapter of the Gospel of John. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Veering away from this week's lectionary readings, I chose these two brief passages from the book of Psalms and the Gospel of John. They immediately tip my hand to the focus of my sermon, don't they? Make a joyful noise to the Lord all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. And Jesus says, I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. My choice of these two passages may have some of you thinking, is his mind so far up in the clouds that he has lost touch with planet Earth? Is he clueless about the multiple catastrophes assaulting us in September 2020? Rest assured, my feet are squarely planted on terra firma. Like you, I am tuned in to the depressing news. I lament the fact that we're in the midst of a global pandemic that has already taken the lives of more than 190,000 Americans and more than or close to a million people worldwide. Our children have just begun a new school year. It's plastered with question marks. First, schools are in person. Wait a second, maybe we ought to do them online. Wait, let's have them go to school for two days and then be at home for two days. Wait, let's try something else. Maybe the children whose last names begin with A through M go on the odd days and uh, it's just chaos. Working parents are juggling their schedules like never before, and they worry that this will be a wasted school year. People are marching in the streets, declaring that black lives matter as much as any other lives. People are arguing over whether we should defund the police or further militarize the police. Whipped up with fear, gun sales and ammunition sales have shot through the ceiling. Our nation is deeply divided politically and a critical election is looming. The temperatures on the planet are rising and the hot, arid climate out west is causing wildfires to burn out of control. More than three million acres are on fire in California, Oregon, and Washington, and many of their communities have been scorched. The economy is teetering as businesses crash. More than 30 million people have, in, have, in, have filed for unemployment benefits. 
the times are tumultuous. Many are experiencing record sleep deficits, and never has the word unprecedented been on the lips of so many. So why drag out this song that says, make a joyful noise to the Lord, when the world is tormented with darkness? And to point out the obvious irony, scientists caution us to refrain from singing. Well, for one reason, the Bible is absolutely peppered with declarations of joy. In addition to the 98th Psalm, we're encouraged to make a joyful noise in Psalms 66, 95, and 100. Consider Psalm, 9, or Psalm 5. Let all who take refuge in God rejoice. Let them forever sing for joy. Psalm 30 sounds practically giddy. God, you've turned my suffering into dancing. You've clothed me with joy. More than 50 of the 150 psalms include the word joy, joyful, or rejoice. You'll also discover these words scattered throughout other books in the Hebrew scriptures. Skim the New Testament, and you'll discover that joy is one of the favorite words in the Gospels of Luke and John. It's also a recurring theme in the letters of Paul. When Paul writes to the church in Rome, he says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace. And when Paul speaks to the Galatians, about the characteristics that God's Spirit arouses in them. The first virtue Paul mentions is love. The second is joy. Now many assume that joy is the result of one's current situation. When work or retirement are satisfying, when the children or grandchildren are making us proud, we're definitely joyful when life is relatively problem-free and the skies are sunny. However, it's clear from the scriptures that joy is not simply tied to a favorable situation. Joy can pulse through our bodies even in the midst of trouble and sorrow. Take our passage from the Gospel of John. Jesus says, I have said these things so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Do you know what the context was when he uttered those words? Was it after he had performed a miracle? Was it when he'd swatted aside a temptation or maybe when a record-breaking crowd came out to hear him? Was it when he instructed the disciples to throw their net into another spot and they landed this spectacular catch? Hardly. Jesus spoke of joy at the Last Supper. Just shortly, before he was betrayed and handed over to his enemies. The disciples are on the verge of losing the one who has opened their eyes to incredible new vistas and given them a true purpose for living. Their teacher, their guide, their counselor is about to be manhandled by Roman soldiers. Would it not be more appropriate to hand out boxes of tissues to the disciples? When we picture the setting of that final meal, with all its tension and fear and despair, talk of joy sounds like lunacy. 
However, Jesus could speak of joy because his bond with God and his bond with his disciples was so deep and so true and so beautiful. Jesus wanted his followers to understand that the bonds of love cannot be broken, not even by death. Joy exudes from a deep, deep place within us. It is a component of our character and a feeling of well-being regardless of what's currently happening. Back in April, 31-year-old Elliot Dallin wrote, Terminal cancer means I won't see the other side of lockdown. Then just a few days ago, he wrote again. This time, five months on, I'm still here, but much has changed. Over the last couple of months, my energy level has dropped and I've started doing much less. I look drastically different because I've lost so much weight. A 20-minute coughing fit is now part of my morning routine. He talked about how sheltering in place alone was making him miserable, but then his sister moved in with him, and he said that changed everything. For more than a year, Elliot had pinned his hopes on being part of a drug trial. He had hoped some new experimental drug would come along that might be the ticket he needed. Eventually, he came to accept the inevitable there would be no miracle drug to cure him. And that forced him to reflect on what is genuinely important. Number one, he said, is gratitude. He said, during my worst moments, the shock of being diagnosed with cancer, the mental lows, and the debilitating symptoms of chemotherapy, it was difficult to picture any future moments of joy, closeness, or love. Even so, at those times, I found comfort in remembering that I have an amazing family. I remembered the friends I've made and the experiences we've had together and the privilege of the life I've lived. Number two, Elliot said, is that a life well lived is long enough. The human body is an amazing thing. You only appreciate it when it begins to fall apart on you. Most people assume that they'll live to an old age. Eliot says, I've come to see growing old as a privilege. Nobody should lament being one year older, another gray hair or a wrinkle. Instead, rejoice that you've made it. And if you feel like you haven't made the most of your last year, well then, try to use your next year in a much better way. Third lesson learned, it's important to let yourself be vulnerable and to connect with others. We live in a society that prizes independence. But he says, having to allow myself to be vulnerable and accept help has given me the best two years of my life. We're created to connect with others and to form loving bonds. 
without someone to love and without someone who loves us, life is lonely. And obstacles are a great deal more difficult to overcome. Because we have the freedom to make decisions, we can make a mess of things. We can knowingly help to spread a deadly disease, build walls that divide and discriminate, set our world ablaze. We can choose to withdraw from the world and surrender its direction to those whose motives lead to destruction. But our Creator has given us the freedom to choose another way. We can take a better path. And that leads to one other thing Eliot said. He said, do something for others. We spend most of our early years looking inward we're constantly attempting to gratify our personal needs. But hopefully, before it's too late, we discover that giving ourselves for the common good is where we find purpose and where we find joy. Life is short. Whether you live to be 31 or 91, the fuse that is our lives burns quickly. So regardless of where you find yourself, do your part to defeat the darkness. Elizabeth Kubler-Ross wrote, people are like stained glass windows. They sparkle and shine when the sun is out. But when the darkness sets in, their true beauty is revealed only if there is a light from within. Following the path of Jesus, which is faith, hope, love, and joy, is what creates the glow. God, let us pray. 
eternal God, who set the planets in motion and stretched out the heavens like a curtain, who imagined parakeets adorned in emerald and prancing antelopes and purple-robed irises, you are Lord of all time and all creation. We marvel at the work of your hands and rejoice that enjoying such masterpieces was not enough for you. How is it that you, the maker of heaven and earth, should long to dwell among us, as near as our breath, as constant as our beating hearts? How is it that you should choose to be God with and for us? We give thanks that you do not leave us orphaned, but abide with us every hour, every moment, by your spirit, you surround us with peace and teach us your truth. You plant the seeds of hope and fill us with joy. You intercede with sighs too deep for words. So we pray with confidence, trusting that you lean close to hear the petitions we voice and that the advocate fills the silence when words fail us. We lift before you the concerns of our hearts and pray for those who are ill or lonely or grieving, those who struggle with addiction, those who suffer from poverty in all its forms, those who endure the threat of violence. We lift before you our deepest longings and our quiet worries and every unspoken prayer that silence draws from our hearts. Holy God, our comfort and our guide, give us grace to sense your presence among us and open our hearts to the whisperings of your spirit. Abide with us and empower us to keep your commandments that we might bear witness to Christ through word and deed, praise and prayer, sacrifice and service. It is in Christ's name that we pray and that we offer the words he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now may grace, hope, and especially joy be yours this day and forever. Amen.